we shall commence this module by understanding the meaning of public debt. Debt of the government is known as public debt. It refers to the borrowings of the government from individuals, organizations, financial institutions and foreign countries. The government resorts to borrowings when the revenue collected through taxes and other sources is not sufficient to cover expenditures. Hence, public debt is one of the tools to cover deficits in the budget. In short, public debt refers to compulsions of governments, particularly those evinced by securities to pay sums to the holders at some future date. These borrowed funds are utilized for development and non-development activities. Additionally, debt is a stock which is to be paid at the end of a year. Local, state and federal governments all borrow money to pay for large projects such as new government buildings, schools or for funding etc. This forms a public debt because it is money that public organizations be obliged to pay for which the burden of paying rests with taxpayers ultimately. Borrowing is a flow variable in a year. This debt can take the form of many types of loans to the government. Moreover, borrowing adjusted with servicing of debt which means return of debt and interest payment is also sometimes mentioned as net borrowing. Over the years, the public debt of central government and that of state governments have increased considerably. After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the meaning and classification of public debt, learn about the sources of public debt, analyze the trends of public debt, comprehend the burden that public debt creates and recognize the methods to reduce the burden of public debt. Government loans are of different kinds and may differ with respect to time of payment, the purpose, conditions of repayment, method of covering liability, etc. The various kinds of public debt are internal and external debt, borrowing of the government within the country or public loans floated within the country are called internal debt. The numerous internal sources from which the government borrows include individuals, banks, business firms and others. Market loans, bonds, treasury bills and ways and means advances etc. are examples of instruments of internal debt. An internal debt may be either voluntary or compulsory. Internal debt implies a redistribution of income and wealth within the nation and it therefore has no direct money burden. Secondly, we will discuss the external debt. Borrowing of the government from abroad is known as external debt. Multilateral borrowing, bilateral borrowing, loans from World Bank, Asian Development Bank etc. form the external debt. These external loans help to engage in a variety of development programs in both developing and underdeveloped countries. These loans are usually voluntary. Initially, the external loans involve the relocation of resources from foreign countries to domestic country, but when interest and principal amount are repaid, there is transfer of resources in the reverse direction. Next, we can also classify debt into short term, medium term and long term debt. First, let us talk about short term debt. Loans for a period of less than one year are known as short term debt. For example, the treasury bills are issued to raise funds for a period of 91 days, 182 days by the Reserve Bank of India on behalf of the government. 
such loans have a very low rates of interest. Hence, to cover the temporary deficits in the budget, short term loans are taken. Next is medium term debt. A medium term debt is normally ranging for a period above 1 year and up to 5 years. One of the main forms of medium term debt is by the way of market loan. The interest rates on medium term loans are reasonable. These are preferred to meet expenditures on health, education, relief work etc. Now if we discuss long term debt, loans that exceed a period of 5 years are known as long term debt. These are mainly in the form of issue of bonds. Generally these long term debts are required for a purpose of retreatment of debts and also for development projects. Now moving on to discuss the productive and unproductive debt. A productive debt is raised for productive purposes and is used to add to the productive capacity of the nation. These debts are long term in nature and are utilized on development activities such as infrastructure development like roadways, railways, airports, seaports, telecommunication, power generation etc. These infrastructural developments lead to revenue generations which are then used to pay the principal amount and interest of the productive debts. That is these debts are self liquidating in nature. If we discuss the unproductive debt, an unproductive debt is one which does not yield any income and does not add to the productive assets of the country. Examples include the debts utilized for transfer payment in the form of subsidies such as old age pension, special incentives to weaker sections etc. Moreover, unproductive debts are a net burden on the economy and the government has to resort to additional taxation for its servicing and repayment. Further, let us now move on to discuss the compulsory and voluntary debt. First, compulsory debt. Normally, the government does not obtain loans through compulsory means and can obtain such loans from banks, financial institutions and large corporate firms at the time of war or a major disaster that is only when it is not possible to obtain voluntary debt. Examples include the compulsory deposit schemes in India. Next is voluntary debt. Generally public loans such as market loans, bonds etc. are voluntary in nature and constitute voluntary debt. People invest in voluntary debts for liquidity and profitability. The rate of interest of voluntary debt is normally higher than that of compulsory debt. Next we shall discuss the redeemable and irredeemable debt. Loans which the government promises to pay off at some date in the future are called as redeemable bonds. These loans have a fixed maturity period and the government has to make arrangements to repay the principal and interest on the due date. The loans are repaid out of the revenue receipts of the government or by further raising loans. Next is irredeemable debt, loans for which no promises are made by the government regarding the exact date of its repayment are known as irredeemable debts. Such debts have no maturity period but the government may pay interest regularly. Normally, government does not resort to such borrowings. Let us now uh, talk about the sources of public debt. The sub components of internal and external debt are first of all about internal debt. The sub components are market loans, bonds, treasury bills, special securities issued by Reserve Bank of India, ways and means advances, special floating and other loans which represent India's contribution towards share capital of international financial institutions like IMF, World Bank, IDA etc. Securities against small savings also constitute a part of internal debt. If we see the components of external debt, we include bilateral borrowings, multilateral borrowings and loans from international organizations like IMF, World Bank etc. 
Apart from internal and external debt, there is another type of debt known as other internal liabilities. Examples are small savings, for example, relief bonds 1987, Kisan Vikas Patras, Indira Vikas Patras, etc., provident funds, reserve funds and deposits, other accounts like postal insurance and life annuity funds, etc. Now, first of all, let us discuss internal debt in detail. The internal debt forms a major part of public debt of the central government of India. The following are the various components of internal debt. First is the market loans. These have a maturity period of 12 months or more and are generally interest bearing. The government issues such loans almost every year. These loans are raised in the open market by sale of securities or otherwise. Market loans and open market operations require identification of real stakeholders. Second is bonds. The government also obtains funds through the issue of bonds such as National Rural Development Bonds. These provide medium term to long term funds to the government and the maturity period ranges from 3 years to 10 year period. Third is Treasury Bills. A major source of short term funds for the government is obtained by the issue of treasury bills. At present, government issues 91 days and 364 days treasury bills. The treasury bills are purchased by the commercial banks and others. Fourth is special floating and other loans. These are representation of India's contribution towards share capital of international monetary institutions like International Monetary Fund that is IMF, the World Bank, the International Development Agency and so on. These funds are non-negotiable and non-interest bearing securities. The government of India is liable to pay the amount at the call of these institutions. Accordingly, it is a short term debt upon government of India. Fifth is the special securities issued by RBI. The government can obtain temporary loans for a period of maximum 12 months from the RBI by issue of special securities which are non-negotiable and non-interest bearing. Such securities provide short term funds to the government. Sixth is ways and means advances. The government of India obtains ways and means advances from the RBI to meet its short term expenditure. These debts are purely temporary in nature and are usually repaid within 3 months. Seventh is the securities against small savings. Since 1999-2000, under the new accounting system, the national small savings that is NSS have been converted into central government securities. Consequently, there has been a sharp increase in the internal debt and the corresponding decline in the small savings. Now let us discuss the concept of external debt. External debt refers to the liabilities of the Indian government, both central and state, public sector, private sector and the financial institutions to overseas parties. The government of India in the past has raised loans from USA, UK, France, USSR, Japan etc. The external debt comprises of firstly multilateral borrowings. A multilateral loan is a kind of loan that involves a number of lenders and a single borrower. The lenders are most financial institutions or banks. Multilateral loan is a common type of loan that is taken country wide. Second is bilateral borrowings. A bilateral loan is a kind of loan that involves a single borrower and a lender. The lenders are usually banks or other financial institutions. And third of type of external loan is loans from IMF, World Bank, etc. Next, let us look into the other internal liabilities. The government does not include these liabilities under public debt. However, the government is liable to make repayment of these liabilities. First are small savings. In recent year, small savings have increased in the economy due to the rising money income. A number of small saving instruments were launched by the government of India recently. These include 
9% परसेंट रिलीफ बॉन्ड्स नाइनटीन किसान विकास पत्रास इंदिरा विकास पत्रास एक्सेट्रा नेक्स्ट इज प्रोविडेंट फंड्स अनदर कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट ऑफ इंटरनल लाइबिलिटीज प्रोविडेंट फंड्स आर डिवाइडेड इंटू टू कैटेगरीज एम्प्लॉय प्रोविडेंट फंड विच आर मीन्स फॉर द एम्प्लॉयज एंड द पब्लिक प्रोविडेंट फंड विच आर मीन्स फॉर जनरल पब्लिक डिपॉजिट्स इन पब्लिक प्रोविडेंट फंड आर रीपेबल ओनली आफ्टर फिफ्टीन ईयर्स अनदर कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ अदर लाइबिलिटीज इज अदर अकाउंट्स अदर अकाउंट्स इंक्लूड पोस्टल इंश्योरेंस एंड लाइफ एनविटी फंड इनकम टैक्स एनविटी डिपॉजिट बोरोइंग अगेंस्ट कंपल्सरी डिपॉजिट्स स्पेशल डिपॉजिट्स ऑन नॉन गवर्नमेंट प्रोविडेंट फंड एंड आउटस्टैंडिंग अमाउंट वी ऑल्सो हैव रिजर्व फंड एंड डिपॉजिट्स विच आर डिवाइडेड इंटू टू कैटेगरीज इंटरेस्ट बियरिंग एंड नॉन इंटरेस्ट बियरिंग दीज इंक्लूड डेप्रिशिएशन एंड रिजर्व फंड ऑफ रेलवेज डिपॉजिट्स ऑफ लोकल फंड डिपार्टमेंटल एंड जुडिशियल डिपॉजिट्स डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पोस्ट टेलीकम्युनिकेशन सिविल डिपॉजिट्स एक्सेट्रा नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू डिस्कस द ट्रेंड्स इन पब्लिक डेट इन इंडिया पब्लिक डेट इन इंडिया हैज बिन ग्रोइंग एट एन अलार्मिंग रेट फॉर द पास्ट फ्यू डेकेड्स India faces difficulty in the financing of economic development because of the underdeveloped nature of the economy and institutional credit deficiencies hence the government has to play an important role in stimulating the rate of capital formation and in promoting the economic development of the economy thus public debt is used by the government as a means for mobilizing the resources the central government's debt has increased by over 51 times since 1980-81 and 2010-11 from rupees 56115 crores to rupees 28 lakhs 98799 crores the main reason for increase in internal public debt in india during the above said period was the requirement of funds for financing various development programs as both tax and non tax revenues were inadequate to finance the government expenditures the external public debt in india also increased significantly as it was utilized to make import payments and to solve the balance of payment problem out of the total public debt the share of internal liabilities increased from 79.6% in 1980-81 to about 90% in 1990-91 it went up further to 94.3% in 2000-2001 and has floated around that range in 2010-11 as well on the other hand the external debt as a percentage of total debt has shown a decline from 20% in 1980-81 to 10% in 1990-91 and further 5.6% in 2010-11 in 1980-81 the total outstanding debt of the central government was 38.6% of gdp out of which internal debt was 30.8% and the external debt was 7.7% the total debt went up to about 55% in the next decade it remained almost the same even in the year 2000-2001 and then it went up further to 56.7% in 2011 the internal debt jump from about 50% in 1990-91 to 52% in 2000-2001 and further to 54.4% in 2010-11 the external debt on the other hand declined from 5.5% to 3.1% and then to 2.3% of gdp in the respective years the tremendous rise in total public debt in india during 1980-81 to 2010-11 provides an alarming signal to the indian economy there is an urgent need to manage public debt in india 
However, we cannot ignore the fact that public debt is essential for the functioning of the government and the economy. According to Global Development Finance Report 2009, India is ranked as the seventh largest debtor country of the world. However, government has now gradually reduced the borrowings and investment from foreign direct investment that is FDI and foreign portfolio investment that is FPI are used as substitute for the borrowings. Next, we will discuss the burden of public debt. Public debt puts a burden on the economy on account of repayment of principal amount and interest. Both internal as well as external debts carry a burden on the economy. To repay public debt, the government may increase taxes or reduce public expenditure. This leads to increase in tax burden which adversely affects the growth and development of India. Higher taxes may demotivate the taxpayers to work hard for the higher incomes. This may have an adverse effect on productive activities in the country. The servicing of internal debt involves transfer of income from younger generations to older generations and from active to inactive enterprises. Internal debt may indirectly affect private investment. It involves huge interest payments. Therefore, lesser funds are available with the government for development activities such as infrastructure. Lack of infrastructure development discourages private investment which affects economic growth. Higher interest burden also leads to availability of lower funds towards activities for social development such as health, education, family welfare etc. Excessive government borrowings lead to loss of liquidity in the economy. It forces the interest rates to go up and public investment is crowded out as there is less liquidity in the economy and the interest rates are too high. The investment suffers and there is deceleration in the growth. Though external debt is initially beneficial for the country as it increases the resource availability of the country, its repayment and servicing creates a monetary load on the debtor country. The degree of load depends upon the rate of interest and loan amount. There is also a loss of economic welfare that is increased taxation leads to sacrifice of the consumption of goods and services. There is also problem of debt trap as certain countries borrow heavily from external sources quite often these funds are utilized for non-development and unproductive purposes. Every so often countries which are highly indebted borrow funds to repay its earlier debts. These heavy borrowings to pay earlier debts put already higher indebted countries in an external debt trap. Countries affected by 2010 crisis are European nations such as Portugal, Italy, Spain and Ireland. Also Dubai debt crisis did have an effect on international community. In the end let us now discuss the methods to reduce the burden of public debt. The steps that can be taken to reduce the burden of public debt are the revenue expenditure like government's wasteful expenditures and subsidies need to be reduced so that they can be met out of revenue receipts of the government. This way the government's net borrowings are used only for productive purposes. There is a need to encourage more foreign investment, disinvestment of sick public sector units, there is need for the proper monitoring of public expenditure. Moreover, special departments should be set up for the same. There is an urgent need for creating consolidated sinking fund CSF to break the vicious cycle of debt and its repayment. Now we will summarize what we have learnt in this module. Public debt refers to the government debt. It refers to the government borrowing from individuals, financial institutions, organizations and foreign countries. Internal debt is the public debt available within the country while external debt refers to the loans taken from outside the country. External debt has two components public and private. Public debt is therefore 
internal debt plus external debt internal debt is always understood as internal public debt loans ranging for a period of less than 1 year are short term debt medium term debt is normally for a period above 1 year and up to 5 years and loans for a period beyond 5 years are long term debt the debts which are productive for the economy are known as productive debt and similarly the debts which do not benefit the economy are known as unproductive debt usually the debts taken by the government are voluntary in nature and are known as voluntary debts whereas in times of war or crisis there is a mandatory loan taken by the government which may be called as compulsory debt the debts which the government promises to pay at the future date are known as redeemable debt and irredeemable is vice versa it does not have a maturity period the core reason for a significant increase in internal public debt in india during 1980 to 2010 was the requirement of funds for financing numerous development programs as both tax and non tax revenue were very inadequate to finance them the external public debt in india increased significantly during 1980 to 2010 as it was utilized to make import payments and solve balance of payment problems public debt both internal and external places a burden on the nation because of paying of principal amount and the interest to reduce public debt there is a need to reduce the revenue expenditures increased foreign investments disinvestments of the six units in the public sector proper monitoring of the public expenditures and creation of consolidated sinking fund are the other methods that can be used for reducing debt